Zion and Halley United Methodist Churches of Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, welcome you to online worship. Good morning and welcome to this time of worship and this time of praise. My name is Don Trollinger and I pastor two United Methodist Churches here in the Chippewa Valley, Halley and Zion UMC. Again, welcome. Are there any of you who have lived in the same area of the state your entire lives? Perhaps the same city or county. My father was a Methodist preacher and later I worked for McDonald's restaurants and later still I became a United Methodist pastor. So I have moved a lot and lived in many different places. Uh, born in Milwaukee, I lived in Menominee Falls, and then rural Eden, and then Ithaca, then Fond du Lac in six different places there, addresses, Stevens Point, two different places, then Brown Deer, then Cedarburg, then Grafton, and then I moved to Manitowoc, following that time, Stanley, and then Jim Falls, then Sheboygan Falls, then Port Washington, and now I reside in Chippewa Falls. 20 different homes. And I have often wondered, did my life have more, have greater challenges simply because I moved so often? You know, at first I decided, yes, yes it did, there was more. But I have come to discover just because we physically move does not necessarily mean we have more challenges or even more changes in our lives. You see, regardless of how many times we move, regardless of if we live in 10 different houses or one house our entire life, change and challenge will come our way. And more often than not, we have no control over the changes that come into our lives. The challenges, however, I believe that's another thing. And Joshua, in our lesson today, Joshua reminds us that we have a choice in life because God has given us that. God has given us free will, has given us a freedom to choose. God has given us abilities that no other creature in all of the world has, we can choose. And Joshua invites the Israelites on this occasion to choose and invites us gathered here this morning to choose. Will you serve God or will you serve many gods? So we're going to go to scripture now, Joshua 24, picking up 1 through 3, and then moving over to 14. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago, your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond Euphrates and served other gods. And then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Then moving over to 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. 
For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. But Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. Descends the reading this morning. Verse 24, And the people said to Joshua, We will serve the Lord our God and obey him. In verse 15, Joshua states, But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. How about you? In your home, your household, who do you serve? You know, whether you live in a 4,000 square foot house or a 400 square foot apartment, whether you live alone or live with 10 other people, who will you, your house, serve? Before I go on briefly, yet importantly, let me say, don't be so concerned about how your house has been. Don't beat yourself up if mistakes were made in the past. Maybe you were not the world's greatest dad. Maybe you weren't a very good role model in your home in the past. Maybe you weren't even a very nice person. But please, don't get caught up in that would have could have, should have ways of explaining life. We all, every one of us, we all fail and we make mistakes at times. And some of us make big mistakes. And some of us terrible life-changing mistakes. And some of us have hurt others deeply. And as real as those things may be, and they are, and they need to be dealt with, but we have the opportunity to choose this day something better, something good. You see, Scripture teaches that in Christ, all things can be made new. Scripture teaches us that in Christ, there is forgiveness. Scripture teaches us that God restores and heals the broken. And Scripture teaches us that God offers us an eternal hope and love. You see, God cares deeply about you. And God cares about you right now. And right now, in these moments, the Word of God through the timeless words and the question of Joshua comes to you and to me and ask, who will you serve? Will you serve the one true holy God or will you serve many gods? Choosing the one true God and actually doing that can be two really different things, right? From our lesson this morning, I want to lift up three ways that we can apply in our lives, three things that will help us be more faithful in our decisions to serve the Lord. We will never be perfect, but we will continually grow in faith and be perfected in God's love. If we do these three things, we will find a growing hope. One, we need to fear the Lord. Two, put away those false gods. And three, 
serve the Lord. Kind of brings to my mind that old song, trust and obey. So first, fear the Lord. In verse 14 it reads, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Do you fear God? Do you have a, a wonderful, loving fear of God? Fear used in this context, this is not a scary boo type of fear. This is a loving respect, a, a humble in awe of, and amazing, wow, you are the creator of all the world type of fear. This is the God of all creation cares about me. Kind of fear. This is the kind of fear that grows out of our understanding that God was, that God is, and that God will always be. So again, do you love, do you fear God? I suspect many, if not most of us, would answer that yes. Our lips would bring out those words, yes, we might even think that we have a wonderful fear of the Lord, but would our actions, our daily lives, give evidence to that statement? For example, when we worship, do we worship in a way that tells others, I love Jesus? I have a wonderful fear of the Lord. Does our worship, our actions, show that to others? In the way that you sing the hymns, the songs, in the way that you pray, in the way that you listen to the scripture read, in the way that you listen to the sermon proclaimed, in the way that you greet people, in the way that you open your Bibles, in the way that you receive our offerings, in the way you pay attention and show concern for the other. Do you do that in worship? Do your actions say to others, I love Jesus and I fear the Lord? Or do your actions say something else? Who do you serve? And outside of these walls, again, what do your actions tell people? Do your actions tell your neighbor that you fear the Lord? Do your actions tell your family that you love Jesus? Does your language tell others, I fear the Lord? What about taking the Lord's name in vain? What about swearing? Do you have a fear of the Lord? Who do you serve? Do you serve the world's expectations or do you serve the Lord's invitations? Again, God looks not for perfection in us. God looks for an allegiance, a loyalty. Who do you serve? Secondly, put away false gods. In verse 14, throw away the gods your forefathers worship beyond the river in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Joshua is saying here, throw away your gods. You see, it's one thing to fear and love God, and then go right back to loving, indulging, spending excessive time with other false gods. Do you do that? Do you spend too much time with false gods? God's? Now here you might be thinking, what the heck, pastor, are you talking about? Well, some of us spend far too much time with the God of alcohol. Some spend far too much money on clothing. Some spend far too much time criticizing and talking about others and all their faults. Some of us spend hours upon hours with our hobbies excessively perhaps some of you spend great amounts of time and money on your cars and homes and sports and on things that pamper and are not needs but rather simply wants and oh then consider how much time during the week are you spending 
with God. Who or what has your time and your efforts? How much of your budget goes to the things of God? How much time during the week are you encouraging and building up the body of Christ? How much effort is put into prayer or scripture or acts of kindness? Perhaps too often we lose the ability of loving and fearing God, and perhaps we lose the blessings of God because we spend far too much time loving the things of the world. We spend too much time pursuing the approval of the world. We spend too much effort seeking the world's acceptance. Joshua would say to us, throw away the false gods, and he would ask, really, really, who do you serve? And then lastly, simply serve the Lord. We need to be clear and obvious and often and continually throughout serving God. In this journey that we call life, in this journey that we are all on, we are all in different places regarding our faith and our relationship with God. Yet, there is something we all can do. We can choose. We can choose this very day as to our willingness to mature in our faith and grow in our relationship with God. So today, let me invite you to consider that and perhaps to consider the following as a place for you to mature in your Christian faith and to grow in your relationship with God. This is my suggestion, uh, my invitation, if you will. Where can you start with your family? Perhaps a sister, a brother, perhaps a cousin, or with a parent or a child or a spouse. But within your families, your household, look for ways that you can serve others or love others or help others within your own families. James Streckham wrote the following, Abraham was chosen to be a blessing to the whole earth, but his vocation was to begin and take effect in the simplest way. He was called to teach his own household, who again would hand down the good news to their households. His being a blessing to the world was dependent on his being a blessing in his own home, families. Today, let me really challenge you and invite you to consider anew your fear and your love of the Lord. Consider putting away some of those things that have become false gods in your life. You know what they are. And consider serving the Lord by serving your families in the ways that you are forgiving, generous, and kind. Today, let your statement of faith be the same as Joshua's. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Have a great week. Keep shining brightly. Take care.